Good morning and welcome. So today we're going to be doing some art journaling. So first of all, I can say hi to everybody watching on Planet Craft, hi to everybody watching on Pretty Gets Pretty, and hi to everyone who's watching on YouTube. Now I should, should be able to see everybody's comments. So if you can see the chat on the screen and you see a comment, then I can see it. If not, I will be flicking backwards and forwards to the group as well, just to check that I'm seeing everything. So, good morning, Linda. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Deb. And hopefully you've all got your bits and pieces ready to join in. Now, if not, don't worry, you'll be able to catch back up with this at a later stage. It's saved both to Facebook and to YouTube. So, don't think, oh no, I haven't got anything ready. I can't join in. You can do. Watch along live for now, and then you can watch back later this afternoon. Usually with YouTube it takes a little bit longer and you'll be able to watch back tomorrow. Okay, so I've pulled out a few things to get started and the plan is to actually do a four page layout. So we're going to be popping a window through. So you want to have something that is a bound journal, whether that's a wire binding or a stitch binding is entirely up to you. It could even be a disc one. Good morning, Carol. So, a little bit about materials. So, our first layer is going to be gesso. So, I have white gesso and transparent gesso here. I'm probably going to be sticking with transparent gesso for what I'm working with. Um, that will all become clear very soon as to why we're going to do that. And I have some gel medium, which we can use both for sticking papers, um, die cuts and other things. But also, we can create a little bit of a resist with some elements as well. And... We have some thick texture paste. Now, Lynette did a really good blog piece yesterday on the different texture paste and what they do. So do refer to that on the Pretty Gets Pretty website. Um, I have the thick texture paste here, but for most journals, you're going to want to step down one to just the normal texture paste. Okay. So with that aside, let's have a look at some journals. So I've pulled out a few different ones. So one of these will match what you're working with, I'm sure. So I have one here, which is lots of different mediums, um, or bases, I should say. So this is when you're going to want to use your transparent gesso, so that you're actually keeping some of that color into your background, okay? Same with if you're working on something that's craft light, like this um, corrugated card. If you're working on something that's a bit whiter, then you, then you can always hop over to your white gesso then. And good morning, Tracy, and good morning, Louise. So that's one type of journal that you might have. Moving on, we have a pink pink journal, so you might have one of these. And this paper is a bit more watercolour based. So if you're going to be spraying it lots, then my advice would be to gesso it, just to give it a little bit more body. But you could also add in some die cut offcuts so that you're actually strengthening that paper just a little bit. Okay. And finally, you might have a very lovely. This is one of my favourites. Can you tell? <laughs> Bristol board sketchbook. So this one is really good for if you also like working with markers. So. This one's by a hoo hoo. But any sort of Bristol board based journal will have the same effect. You won't be just sewing into this one, you just spray into it. But you won't want to soak it too much. So don't go all out, all over spraying and then add lots of water and things like that. That's not the type of journal this is for. This will be happier with things like um, acrylic paint. Um, Acrylic ink is also a good one for it, as well as all your coloured pencils and your dry mediums. So hopefully you've got one of those types of journal with you. So I will try and talk through each of those as we go. So I'm going to pick the middle ground one for today, which is our kind of watercolourish paper. start a new section so you are going to want to count the pages so we want one seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine
side, two sides, two sides, four sides, five sides, six sides. So as long as you've got that many pages left in your journal, you're going to be able to do this process. So mainly what we want to do is these like centre ones here, and we're going to pop a window through this panel here. Okay. Now, because of the amount of time this is going to take, what I said is this is part one, and basically in two weeks' time we'll do part two, and then finally part three, which should give us enough time to get everything done. It's also going to give you time to get any supplies that you want to in the middle. In terms of colours, I've pulled out some paints as well, so I'm starting to think about colour scheme. So, I have Naked in Get Crackled and Get Chalky. I have a lovely pale gold in the Get Metalled. I have Lime and Get Crackled. Get Chalky and Tickled. Get Chalky and Thunder. Get Metalled Rose. Get Metalled Pearl get metal gold ice and get metal russian are we going to use all of those not necessarily but it's good to have them on the desk so you'll get kind of a feel for colors so if i pop all these upside down so you can see all the colors and you're going to get a rough idea of palette so we're going really soft kind of vintage looking and very pretty so if you've got acrylic paints in these colors that's what you're going to be working with and we can go from there. Okay. So let's move those back out of the way and let's get started. So I'm going to start off by doing a little bit of gessoing. Now, I'm not going to go all over. So there's going to be some bits that are hit and miss. We can dry brush others so that we start to build our textures right from the get-go. If you have a heat gun, for this morning that is going to be a very useful thing because we want to kind of keep going without hand to wait for drying I'm very impatient <laughs> so I'm just going to brush this on and typically when I'm brushing gesso I will try and do like a crisscross motion to get out most of my brush strokes if you like the brush strokes however you can leave it in so at the moment this is going to look like I'm just painting white on white. But what you're doing with gesso is you're providing a key for the rest of your paint to actually cling to. So even if your sprays don't stick to something, you'll find that your paints will. It gives you a tooth, certainly when you come on to doing things like your pencil work. So pencil aren't something that you usually get to look in in this type of process, but I'm a bit of a pencil nut. <laughs> so you don't have to be too gentle, you can do it like you're painting a wall. <laughs> and that I'm going to use up every little bit that I have left in my brush. Now what I would say is if you are doing a lot of gessoing then try and keep one brush for doing your gesso just because you can find that it can start to dry and get a little bit stuck. Okay, so with that done I'm going to give that a very quick blast. If you're struggling to see where it's dry, if you notice I just tilted the, the book to the light so that you can see where the light was catching it. So if it's still wet, it's going to look really glossy. 
if it's starting to dry you're going to get a bit more of a, just a gentle sheen to it when you tilt it to the light okay always just quickly pop your hands over it just check you haven't missed anywhere ready for the next bit now if you have some scrap paper this is a good time to just slide it in underneath as i'm going to be kind of going through onto this next section with the same colors i'm not too bothered about that page but certainly as you get to here you're going to want to just mask that off so way i can do that is i'm just going to pull out my protective sheet so if you have any of the um marker packs you tend to find that you've got one of these in there too so let's pop that back there and back to our gesso page just make sure you do get the right one okay and feel it on the don't need to sit okay so now i'm going to go in my sprays now I've pulled out Pretty Amazing Spray in Blush Dreams and a little bit of the Pearl Spray in Dove. So thinking about that pink grey theme that I want to have going throughout the piece and we're going to give it a little shake. Now sometimes I use these as a watercolour straight from the pot which is a really easy way of colouring and making sure that your colouring blends in with your background. So there's lots of ways that you can use these. Okay. So I'm just going to start with a little bit of a spray. Like so. I'm going to get my water and just load up my brush. So this is just the same brush that I've done the gesso with. try and get most of that wetness out. I'm just going to blot it off a little bit on to some bamboo and we can start to blend that in. So this is really just to break up that whiteness of your page before we start to build more and more colour on top. And start to see that this gesso is popping back through so this is why we do a bit of a hit and miss with our gesso and we're going to do the same over here so blend that out and again we're not being overly fuzzy or precious to your edges don't worry about that just yet because typically what I do is towards the end I'll actually go in and do some ink blending around the outside just to frame the piece okay now as you've brushed all that out it should be pretty dry but we're going to give it one more blast of heat just so that when we're doing stenciling and things on top it's not me fading in it into it too much Be 
creating some texture into this background. Now obviously because we're going to be cutting this side here, you kind of want to leave a little bit of a, a gap where you're not adding too much texture, just otherwise it's going to make it a bit more difficult for you to cut through. So that's something to bear in mind when you're doing this next stage. Now you can either do this with stencils and texture paste if you don't mind getting a bit mucky, or if you are more of a tidy crafter, what you can do instead is just get some die cuts and actually stick those into the background. So I'm going to start with this lovely stencil. Now all the stencils I'm using are on the Pretty Gets Pretty website and some of them are part of today's Five for Friday. So I'm sure Lynette will pop up the details. So I'm going to grab a little palette knife. It doesn't have to be an expensive one. And then we can actually work through our stencil with our texture paste. So I'm going to go for the thick texture paste, but if you just have normal texture paste, that's more than enough for this type of work. Okay. Let's get some of that in there. Try and spread that out across my blade a little bit. Okay. So leaving this right hand section free. Now this isn't about getting a perfect representation of this pattern. We can just do a little bit. Let's take a little bit more down here. Now on this side we can go a bit more all out. <laughs> so let's get a bit more texture paste onto my palette knife. And if you can get it so it's a bit further along your blade, it'll help you out rather than having it all on the end. So this time let's take that about there. So I'm just going to hold it out. coating through at least one of the sections then everything else kind of breaks up around it as if you're blending it out side until everything is off your pipe knife. So even you, if you're just getting the tiniest bits through your stencil, it's going to add a little bit of interest into it when we lift it off. So you should have something that looks like that. Okay. Now what I would say is have a little pot of water or a little tray that you can just pop your stencil into. So it doesn't dry off too much. I'm just going to dip my palette knife in water for a moment because we're going to need it again in a minute. And let's clean that off. Okay. So most things will clean off with water. As long as you do it fairly quickly. <laughs> How are you all going? Are you crafting along today? Oh, that's good that the paints are on a special offer. <laughs> and morning, Morak. Morning, Carol. And just check out if there's anything else. Okay. 
and that we've done that I'm gonna get another stencil and this time now you want to be a bit more careful because obviously this is still going to be wet so I'm just gonna line that up over the top and this time I want to be more kind of inkified rather than textured so you have a couple of options you can use your blending brushes if you don't mind them getting a little bit messy or if you want to just be nice and economical you can just get some little um, makeup sponges which are probably more than enough for what I want to do so I'm just going to get a little section I'm going to curl it round and let's go for now bear in mind if you're using distress inks or anything like that it's going to stay water reactive so when we start to add more sprays later you can find it's going to create some interesting effects so i'm going to go for hickory smoke which is a dark gray so it should be a little bit darker than our dove but not so dark that it's black now, if you find that you need to just tone it a little bit darker in places, then you can always add a touch of black, but without going too much. Now, those of you that are used to blending your inks with blending brushes will find that when you're working with sponges, your colour is going to be denser. I'm not going to do all of this I'm just literally going to pick out the sections that I want so I thought this bit kind of looks a bit like a stained glass window so I'm going to go with that bit and I think to balance it out I think up here would work as well so this time remember our texture paste is still a bit damp so we just want to be a little bit mindful of that and I'm just going to pop that in there I'm just going to pat that through the stencil. Okay, and down here, although we're probably going to end up covering this up with whatever um, frame we, bring, we build up, by doing those layers underneath, it means that we don't get little halos that appear around things. So I'm going to pop that down there. A bit more ink onto my sponge. And we can go for it. So this might be one way you start to think actually, just to make it stand out a little bit more. Going to hop over to a bit of black, so a bit of black in this case. And try to always curve your sponges so that you're not getting any harsh lines. I'm just going to start from that centre and work outwards with the black. As you can see, it's quite subtle. It's not black black.
So because in places our thick texture paste is quite thick, that isn't going to dry it completely, but it is going to give it a skin, so it's not going to necessarily transfer onto the back of everything else that touches it for a good start. To let it dry completely, you're going to want to let it dry overnight before closing your journal, which is why we're going to concentrate on just the two pages to start with. Then next time we're going to do our window, then finally we'll finish off with our background. Okay, so let's pull out our word stencil. So this one has lots of positive words. So we have serene, drift, dream, calm, love, peace. And you don't have to use all of them. So if you have a particular message that you want to do into your journaling, you could just pick one of them. If you want to just use it as a texture, my top tip, flip it over, work from the back so that you're not necessarily having, oh, it's a, it's a word, and then just do parts of letter forms instead. So I think the love is going to be really good to have just there. So you have a couple of options. You could go over the top with a pipe knife, but because we've got this little bit of texture paste just in here, what I'm thinking is it would be really good if we just kind of stippled through that love. So I'm going to get some gel medium. And thanks, Matt. Let's get that level. I'm just going to stipple over the top. Now, if you have a stenciling brush that is actually designed for stippling, you'll have, find it much easier. And again, you want to keep one just for when you're working with your, your gel mediums, um, transparent gesso, um, your texture paste, just because over time you'll find they just get a little bit stiff. Also, um, finding a really good quality brush cleaner is another good call. Because we want to look after our brushes and make them last as long as possible. And then when they're well and truly ready for the bin, you can even put them into your artwork. So I know Lynette's done some lovely ones that she's had the paint brushes in. So no doubt you'll find samples of those on the group. And of course, when we're stippling, we're also creating a bit of a key so that when we do start to... <laughs> My brush cleaner is called Taz. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, Ian was doing my brushes for me last night. I didn't have such a good day yesterday, so bless him. He was cleaning for me. Okay, over on this side. I'm going to just do this section here. So I'm not too bothered about what the words actually say because I'm just going to try and build up just a little bit of texture into this corner. So where we've got the solid area just here, we can use that to start to tap out the brush a little bit. And we can just go in like so. So you're going to tap back into that little puddle and then pull that through and again tap it up in there and we're just going to go down here and it may be that I missed parts of letters with my stippling over here but it doesn't matter keep this as love what I would say is before you then try and do any more stenciling over that section just give it a bit of a blast with a heat gun so just make sure you put your lid back on your gel medium because the last thing you want to do is weld your lid to it or dry it out
your jam medium when it's dry will go clear so you should be able to see when you tilt it to the light that you can actually see through the bits that you've applied you can sometimes find that if it's overlapped onto texture paste it takes a little bit longer but um, again I'm going to leave that side just for a moment and just concentrate on this side while that's still setting so I have pulled out a couple of distress oxides as well. I'm just going to go a little shape. Now I don't want to obliterate everything, so I'm going to go a little bit more careful. brush another wash so there are going to be some elements where you're going to want to keep that kind of spray so where that pink's really gone for I really like that but in other sections if it's blobbed a bit and you just going to want to brush that out so that it doesn't take too long between layers so just here I'm just going to drag that down And I don't mind that I'm going over this little bit of design there. I just want to kind of keep some of it though. So you'll notice I'm only going part the way over the top. If at some point further down the line we want to reintroduce that, we can always go back in with a stencil. And I'm just going to brush up into this top corner as well. So now you can see that we're starting to get a little bit of a ink blending around the outside. Now, because we've got this colour up here, you want to kind of mirror that down this bottom section too. So you can use what's just on your brush, just to start to blend that colour in. If you think I could do with a bit of the antique blending. This is one of the ones where you like, I could really do with wearing a knee. <laughs> I'm just going to take that colour over there and we can really see where our gesso is now starting to really pop through. And of course, with, as it's an oxide, we can always add water to create different chalky effects. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that pool just there. So I'm just holding my brush on it and letting that drift back up the bristles so that we're not getting little pools of pink. And we can bring that down here, and we can blend that in, like so. Okay. So as we've done that on this side, hopefully by now, it should be fairly dry. So if we just look on top of where the texture paste is, you can see that the gel medium has gone to more of a little bit of a translucent grey rather than white and we should be okay to go. So I'm going to kind of mirror this same arrangement. So the antique lean is going to come across here and a little bit up into this corner. going to see a difference between where we apply the texture base after the sprays and where we've applied the sprays over the top. So the texture paste loves taking colour. So I'm just going to brush that out. So you're still going to see that we've got this kind of halo from the spray, but it's not wet, wet. Now 
here where we've got a bit of a puddle. I'm just going to press and hold to soak it up just a little bit and take that colour down this edge. The brush streams and the um, kitchen ringo work so well together because obviously your blush dreams has this lovely sparkle to it and then you have the chalkiness as the kitchen ringo it's like a lovely combination one of my favorites okay so now i want to kind of highlight my word love so you want to check that it's absolutely bone dry before you do this next bit So a little bit the brushing dreams so and you can see that it's going to start picking up that texture. Now where it's overlapped your texture paste, don't panic. Okay, so you're going to see it's a bit more difficult to read. We can actually help that once dry with a bit of patina over the top. So I'm going to fade that pink up there. I'm going to bring it down into this section down here. So don't be afraid of getting your brush into your actual binding. And I'm just going to literally flick it so it's going to blend that out. Try not to do that too much along your binding. But if we go and flick this way, it's not too bad. I'm just going to blend that down the texture paste a bit here across this way like so so you should have something where you've got the love kind of starting to pop back through now as we start to build more and more layers up what you're going to find is that it's going to pop a bit more each time okay So, I'm going to work down to this bottom corner, so back in with our text, and I'm going to go, let's go back to front this time, just because I want to have a little bit of that pink introduced just down here. So, let's grab an ink pad, and grab a little kitchen flamingo, which when you're using it for the ink pad can be quite strong i'm going to take a little bit of a step down and i'm going to go to sponge sugar because we just want this to be in the background and we still want that little dial kind of coming through and this is going to be really subtle But the whole thing about this approach is layers, layers upon layers upon layers. And because it's in a binding, you don't want that those layers to be built with lots and lots of depth, because otherwise your journal's just not going to close. So you end up having to do it with lots of ink. And draw shadows and coat tricks like that to make it look more dimensional without actually adding depth. Okay. So we've got a little bit of a really subtle texture going on, but for you to actually see what it says, you've got to get right up close and actually start really looking at your layouts. One of the fun things is to try and figure out how somebody created background sometimes. Kind of for reverse engineering. Okay, so that is pretty much dried over the top. 
So if you want to bring that out more, you can do that with gel pens. You could use um, watercolour brushes. So things like your clean colours or your Arteza real brushes, that type of thing. So you've got that kind of control of watercolour in a pen. Would be really good. Okay, so you want to make sure that all your backgrounds are really dry before you start stamping into them. So I'm just going to give this a quick blast. And heat from the back too. You've got to get that decorating done ready for tomorrow's workshop. So, for those of you new that don't know about the workshop, there's a workshop on um, tomorrow. Just, I think you can still buy this book on the website. But obviously, it's not going to make it too much time to track along, but you can always track it after. you can feel it's a bit cool to the touch so if you're finding that then you know don't rush the stamp um, let it dry a bit longer or if you can leave it to dry overnight I'm just going to quickly clean up my messy mat from underneath just so that doesn't accidentally transfer anywhere it shouldn't pulled out a few different stamps but actually I've missed a step. Just one more before, before we actually stamp. And, and I was looking at this stencil and I was like it would be really good to kind of um, do like a fawny backdrop. So I want to put a rose eventually on this page. So by pulling out details like that that you think oh that could be that then we can have something that's going to add a little bit extra texture. Now, you've got a couple of options. You could go in with small ink and layer it up that way, which is quicker drying and it's quicker process. Or if you want to start doing it a little bit papery stencil, you can do. So, I'm going to be brave and I'm going to go for thunder. Now this dries to a nice dark grey, so something to bear in mind, it can be quite strong um, and I'm just going to get a little flat brush. Now because we've got this texture paste underneath there is a chance that it could go through and under so you want to try and work with a nice dry brush as much as possible but you've also got to kind of let go of that fear of messing it up. So I'm just going to do a little line along that stenciled edge and can just flick that up. So you're kind of taking out most of the excess out of your brush. So I'm going to do the same along here. So by the time you're getting up to this point, your brush is pretty dry anyway. And then I'm going to flip that in. Now you will find, because we've got this dress oxide on there, and because your paint is wet, you're going to start to get some interesting textures happening. Try and 
and on each section to work from the outside in just to try and get the coverage of that entire shape then work on the next section so it's a little bit longer than what you would normally spend but it's worth it Now, with something like this where you've got lots of distinct sections, try and do an odd number as solid. So whether that's three, five, seven, and it will look a little bit more polished. Matter. So there's my three kind of solid areas. If I lift carefully, you can see what we're going for. Then from there, what I'm going to do is just blend that out. So I'm very likely going to dip my brush into water and it's going to soak it up straight away. It's literally going to wick up the brush and you're going to be able to see it go. So you want to make sure that you were taking out most of that water. To the paint so I'm literally just using what's in the top section so you don't need to dip your paintbrush into the main pot so you get a tiny tiny section and again I'm going to follow that same tip of drawing along that edge and I'll take that through and because we've got that water on a brush it's going to start to just make that paint blend out Starts to dry out the brush a bit, and you're going to go back into the water, get as much out of that brush as possible, back into the paint so you've got a little bit on there, tap it along, then brush it out. Now be aware of where your word starts, so you don't want to be overlapping that. But this is going to be where kind of your photo elements, stamped images are all going to sit around this kind of corner around here. something that's quite a large panel like this section here I'm just going to literally just do that top section and just flick it down just because we're not that bold if it starts to get a bit fuzzy now if you lift it up and you've got some little splotty bits like this again just going to even out the brush we can let those bits paste just because they'll have made that a little bit difficult to get it through your stencil like so so what I'm thinking is we're going to have a nice flower that we're going to pop back here we might have a little photo element that we're going to pop up here and our kind of journaling is going to come down this section here so you always want to be thinking about your layout structure as well. Give your brush a good clean. And 
would mop out any excess water. Just because if you have a tendency to leave your brushes still wet, you can easily forget and then suddenly ruin your artwork by having too much water in the brush. So typically what I do is I just pinch the bristles with a cloth. So as I'm drying it, I'm also trying to shape it a little. You don't have to shape it perfectly, but so that you're getting any stray bristles to kind of behave while they're still wet. Okay. So looking at time and looking at my piece, I'm going to let that dry for now. So next time we are going to be stamping. So if I show you the stamps I'm going to use, I'm going to get kind of a head start. So I want to use this little rose here. And we're going to use two or three of those. There's going to be butterflies, lots of butterflies, but this is me. <laughs> And I'm also going to be doing a bit of work with this stamp here. So I know that there is a stencil in the offer that is a kind of leafy background. So if you want to use that instead of the fleur de lis, you can swap that in for that. And it's going to be very florally, very pretty. And you're also going to want to have some sort of photo element. So this could be you know, copies of family photos or it could be from the paper kits. So I'm going to be using some of those into our artwork. Okay, so that will be two weeks today at 11. So I hope you've all had a good morning. Have a fantastic weekend. I will see you in two weeks time. Yeah, liquid soap for the brushes is absolutely fine too. Um, if you want to um, just save a, a, a poorly brush, sometimes hair conditioner can help because at the end of the day, most of them are natural bristles rather than synthetic. On synthetic brushes, and you tend to not need it so much. They tend to last a little bit longer, but your, your natural brushes like your, your badger hair, um, squirrel, so on and so forth, a little bit of conditioner goes a long way. And you're welcome, Taylor. So, have a fantastic weekend. Any questions, you can pop them either in the group or on the video, or you can message me and I will answer. Take care, and I will see you in a fortnight.